Welcome to Celtic State of Mind, I'm Paul John Dykes and today we are coming on a little earlier for a Europa League bulletin. So we're keeping our eye on the draw and um, already there are comments coming in as to who you would like to see in the, the group stages of the Europa League. I've seen a lot of chat around um, a return for Brendan Rodgers to Celtic Park. Could you imagine that? Would you welcome him back? There's a the question. Um, as fans, it's very unlikely. In fact, it's not going to happen. We're not going to be at the games, are we? Uh, but I think that would be an interesting thing as well. I mentioned this last night after the, the victory, the slim victory, although the dominant victory last night, that, uh, you know, it's going to be difficult for the club because normally there's that boost of the Champions League package or the Europa League package in relation to the tickets. So uh, we're not going to have that, are we? How, the, how are the club going to deal with that? Uh, because normally uh, we would all be a season ticket holders given the option and then they would go in public sale. How's that going to happen in this virtual world where we can't get to the games? Um, that'll be very interesting. So I'm keeping an eye on the Europa League draw on the big screen there. And um, if you hear before I do, give me a shout. It's going to be very interesting. Great to be in the pot. I think uh, the big part of that yesterday after the game was Neil Lennon. Obviously, he uh, responded almost immediately to to suggest that uh, due to the fact that we got through, that Odson Eduard um, is very likely to be staying at Celtic. Uh, Lennon said, I am very confident he'll still be here after Monday. Well, Monday uh, during the day and at night, I'm sure we're going to be extremely busy around the, the country in terms of uh, you know new signings and transfers. How busy is it going to be at Celtic? I've seen quite a bit of speculation this morning. Um, breaking news this morning was from uh, the Italian media talking around Mattia Di Schilio, who is the Juventus fullback. He can play it right back. He's 27 years of age. He's an Italian internationalist, formerly of AC Milan and Celtic have approached Juve with a view to bringing him in on loan. It looks as though the player himself is unconvinced with uh, Celtic's approach, so we will have to see with that. It's a quality player, of course, um, but I wouldn't write it off just yet. You just never know, but that shows you the quality that Celtic are after. It would seem that one of the players who has been linked to us for a number of weeks, uh, certainly will not be going to Celtic, and that's Omar Colley. I think uh, Kevin Graham spoke about him with enthusiasm, a big imposing centre-half from Sampdoria. Seems to be um, in advanced talks with Fulham. The English football transfer merry-go-round has already started. And tens of millions uh, are being thrown around that league. Uh, very interestingly enough, the only players that uh, I've seen confirmed interest in from Celtic um, are Mattia De Schilio and, of course, Ryan Sessing on, where uh, the other day there it was confirmed that Celtic had made, made an approach. Will the progression into the Europa League group stages give us uh, more influence? Absolutely yes, because you know that would have been, on a financial level, something of a disaster had Celtic uh, failed to go through last night. I don't think there were any real scares, to be honest with you. We were watching that game intently, Stevie Mullen and I. And um, yeah, convincing... I think it was. I mean, it's 1-0, right? So straight away, you think to yourself that it was a, a slim a slim win. And I think it was slim only in the scoreline. Celtic dominated as they did last week against Riga. And I'm going to have a look at that um, game as well. I must apologise throughout this broadcast. I need to keep uh, drinking liquids because I'm on uh, flying solo once again for the second time this week. Or is it the third? Um, we do have... Our regular contributors, our regular pundits on a Monday, uh, Kevin Graham, who has been a long time contributor to a Celtic State of Mind and who was at the very early kitchen table sessions with myself, uh, comes in on a Monday and uh, we do the bulletin with Kevin. On a Tuesday, we have Lawrence Connolly. On a Wednesday, Colin Watt from the Greenock Celtic Supporters Club. And on a Thursday, Stevie Mullen comes in on a regular basis. Stevie, of course, is the president of St Rocks and um, I love getting his insight into the games as well as the bulletins. You will notice that on a Friday, we don't have a permanent 
pundit. So I've been putting it out there. Do you fancy your chances? I've seen a few people saying, oh, they could do that. Well, the studio's based in Dalkeith. If you want to get involved, then get in touch. Let me know and uh, come into the studio and tell us your views and you can answer some of the questions that come in, um, of which there are many at the moment and I will be running through them just now before we go to any other items on the today's agenda. Uh, Joe Porter, we loved to see Leicester and Dundalk. I think uh, the Leicester thing came up straight away, didn't it? And to be honest with you, I mean, with regards to Brennan Rogers. I think most of us are over the whole um, saga with Brendan. He did what he did, and we've continued with our success. So um, it certainly didn't hinder us. It it could have done. It could have done when Neil Lennon came back in, steadied the ship, and has continued uh, since then. Uh, A couple of wee bumps in the road, that's all that we've had under Neil Lennon. And um, if we draw Leicester, we draw Leicester. I sometimes do like... Drawn English clubs, there's been some great, um, you know, contests in the past between Celtic and in the English clubs in Europe. Um, and in the not too distant past against uh, the likes of Manchester United, going further back, um, against Liverpool and Blackburn and the memorable Seville run, uh, further back than that, you, you we met, uh, Liverpool were very unlucky to go out against Liverpool, uh, Steve McManaman, uh, goal, if you'll remember correctly, the Maisie, the Maisie run after, uh, we had done so well. Uh, Jackie McNamara, I think, and Simon Donnelly were our goal scorers in a 2-2 draw. So, yeah, I do like uh, drawing English clubs. I remember also recently Arsenal uh, coming up against Arsenal. I think it was Donati's final game in the green and white hoops. So I'm keeping an eye on the screen. So as soon as any of the names start coming out the hat, then I will certainly announce it. If you get it before me, please do tell us um, how that's progressing. It's going to be very interesting to see who Celtic get and then we can start planning our um, European nights on a Celtic state of mind. How great will it be uh, for the away games where we could do it live and we can get a venue maybe in Glasgow and we can get the panel lined up and everybody can come along and watch the game live um, because obviously not everybody can get away uh, to the away games uh, in the Europa League, but um, it would be fantastic at some point that we were able to do that uh, in a in a place in Glasgow, there's a couple of venues uh, we're already been been speaking to, and we can do it live. We might even get ex players in, some pundits um, beyond the Axom uh, panel, and get all of you guys involved as well. And it'll be a good night, I'm sure. Might even bring some musical uh, elements into that evening. So that is something that I'm looking forward to. Once we get out of the current um, restrictions, so Stephen Forbes. You're commenting on YouTube. Welcome back. I've seen you coming into the broadcast fairly regularly, so welcome back to the show. And uh, you're commenting on YouTube. Um, We're heading towards 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. As you'll know, you subscribe free. Just click the button. uh, Get subscribing to us because, I mean, yesterday we had four broadcasts, four live broadcasts coming out of a Celtic state of mind. And, you know... As we go forward, the broadcasts will increase. We're bringing in more shows. There's a big announcement, actually, today. There's going to be a big announcement, I think, around about 6 o'clock from a Celtic State of Mind and a State of Mind, who are the production team behind a Celtic State of Mind, and that's uh, where we're recording today. We record at a State of Mind studios in Dalkeith. And uh, there is a big announcement because we are going to be producing the official podcast of a Scottish League club. Who could that be? We're in discussions with a second Scottish League club, but we'll certainly announce that uh, we have one already in partnership and the first podcast will go out next week. So we'll announce that tonight. Um, It's not Celtic. Stephen Forbes says, now that we know the Pots, the Glamour Group, Leicester City, Milan... Lily, with all the Battle of Britain, Brendan return hype. Less exciting, Quarabag, Cluj, Zoria, or how about Dundalk and Port 4? Um, it's one of the ones, isn't it? I think you do get your kind of glamorous ties, your sexy teams to draw. Um, but then you look at, and I had this kind of discussion with a, a pal of mine this morning, you look at sometimes a group that you can progress in because up until now, 
You look at uh, the European opponents we've had so far, obviously we've not had any of the big guns because we're entering uh, the competition at such an early stage. And we'll talk about that in just a few moments because of Scotland's coefficient uh, improving due to the performance of Celtic and our near neighbours. Um, you know, we've not had the big guns and, you know, there, there's a kind of train of thought that leave the big guns, really. Leave them. We're in pot one. Uh, leave the, the tricky games. They're all tricky, of course. And so uh, after the group stages, I would love to get uh, a less exciting group, as you call it, Stephen, because there's more chance of getting through, isn't there? Even though, as I said before, there's no guarantees with... Um, We've had two tricky ties and obviously Ferenc Varos knocked us out, bounced us out of the Champions League. And um, just going back to the Scotland coefficient, you know, with Celtic and Rangers making the Europa League group stages again, um, it's improved our coefficient. And it means that two places um, for Scottish teams will uh, be in the European uh, UEFA, sorry, UEFA Champions League qualifying from next season rather than the one. And, you know, the big thing for me is that at the moment, uh, as a country, the coefficient, the coefficient of Turkey has them in 12th position. Scotland is sitting in uh, 13th. Both countries have got two clubs in European competition at the moment. So we'd, we both have an opportunity to improve on our coefficient. And if Scotland outperforms Turkey, there's a chance to break into the top 11. And if you do that, uh, there is even the opportunity, the likelihood of an automatic Champions League place. How about that? How long has it been since that happened? You know, we go through this process, very tricky process of playing a number of qualifiers. So it just shows you how the improved performance in Europe from uh, mainly Celtic, but Scottish clubs in general can improve the coefficient and make the route a lot easier for future tournaments. Now, the Europa League group stages um, draw officially takes place at 12 o'clock, but obviously you've got all the histrionics that go on beforehand. So we will try and get an update as soon as it appears on my screen. If you get it first, let me know because I'm not going to be on my phone um, if I can help it, just to try and make sure that we engage with as many of you as possible. There's a few other stories, um, obviously, to discuss today as well. Um, we were hearing this morning that six Kilmarnock players had tested positive for COVID-19 and um, that has resulted in tonight's game against Motherwell being called off. So, you know, the the situation continues, doesn't it? We're hearing about players uh, being tested positive. It's going to continue. There are other high-profile people um, worldwide being tested positive and it shows you the impact of this coronavirus as it continues to sweep through the globe. I hope everybody at home is good and well and you know we do look forward to uh, a time where you know we keep going on about this new normal what normality is going to look like and you know the example you've got to look at really is just other viruses that have entered um, the world over the last uh, few decades and one of the obvious ones being obviously HIV and it's still there and what happens is everybody um, you know adapts to it to avoid it uh, or adapts to live with it um, this is going to be a virus and yeah there will be a vaccine for it um, but it will continue to spread and we'll need to live with it and we'll need to continue with precautions but um, until there's a vaccine um, it's going to be a strange old world moving into the Christmas time and my big concern with that with regards to the mental health implications is that this is a time of year isn't it where a lot of people are affected not everyone but a lot of people with mental health issues are affected uh, during the winter months and uh, the change in seasons. And also, you know, sometimes when Christmas and New Year happens and it appears that everybody's having a great time, it brings back um, kind of dark feelings and thoughts to a lot of people who may not be in the best shape. So keep an eye out for friends and family during these times because I know that this is, you know, where suicide rates normally, under normal circumstances, are at their highest. So please keep an eye on people and look for the signs. There's a lot of experts out there who are better versed than me. Uh, so please, we can put you in touch with them, of course, but um, get in touch with anyone if you need to talk. Um, and if you think that we can assist, then we know plenty of people who have that expertise as well. So thank you very much, Stephen, for 
your input there. I think, as I say, I'd like to play it safe. Maybe that's uh, it's not like an ambition because you play it safe to get through the groups sometimes as well. And we've had some groups of death uh, over the years. Now, IH decorating, and by the way, ten years in a row that we've you know qualified for the groups. And sometimes people talk down the Europa League groups, but that is some record, isn't it? Ten years in a row. Um, it means nothing to me when you hear these. Uh, so-called pundits and fans of English clubs criticising Celtic in the Scottish game because, you know, uh, within the bubble that we operate uh, of Scottish football, and it is a goldfish bowl, and, um, you know, without the broadcasting uh, riches and without the sponsorship riches of other leagues, we really are performing well. And we've got to sometimes take stock of that. I know I would much rather be a Champions League club. It's a discussion Kevin and I have quite a bit because I think Kevin's resigned to us being a Europa League club. But I'm not resigned to that. We are this season, that's for sure, because that's where we're playing. But you've still got to have the aspirations of Celtic and the heritage and traditions of this club and the proud European history that Celtic have. Not just the one-off uh, victory in 1967, but you know the performances throughout the 60s and the 70s um, are something to save and something to be proud of. But with that record, 10 group stages in a row, we are doing well in Europe. You've got to take that. We are doing well. We're doing well under the circumstances. Uh, we could do better. That's the thing that Celtic fans are always striving to do better. And I know Neil Lennon and the, the staff and the board and everybody at Celtic will want to do better as well, financially, but also because it's uh, the prestige and everything that comes with that. You know, attracting new players. We're going for a player there, De Skelio, who doesn't seem keen on uh, moving over to Scotland. And, you know, that's something to, to sell is often the European platform. And what we can offer this season isn't as glamorous as the Champions League. So... It shows you the impact that that has. IH Decorating, thanks for getting involved. Again, easiest possible ties for me. Qualification to knockout round is all I want from the group stages. I've got to agree with that. I've got to say, um, you know, we, we know that you progress and you're going to get one of these glamorous ties in any case eventually along the way. Um, and I would just like to get through. I would like to stay in the competition. Uh, I want to stay in all the competitions this season. We've, we've been going on about it quite a bit on a Celtic state of mind. We want to do as well as possible in the five tournaments. I don't think anybody is expecting Celtic to win the tournament. We go into it to do as best as we possibly can uh, in terms of the Euro uh, Europa League. But... Uh, it's not beyond us to win the domestic tournaments that, that we are still competing in. Uh, we've got a treble treble under our belts. We're two games away from winning a, a quadruple treble. And uh, we are obviously within a season where we could, you know, compete for the fifth treble in a row. The priority is 10 in a row. I keep getting reminded of that and I totally agree with that. But um, at Celtic, every single game has to be won. Uh, a draw is never good enough, is it? Uh, now, here we go. William Kennedy, another first for Celtic, pot one status. William wants Leicester, he wants AC Milan, he wants Lille as well. So um, a lot of people are wanting Leicester, eh? It's a bit, there's a bit of kind of, um, you know, uh, needle about a game like that because of, obviously, Brendan Rodgers and I think Leicester have just signed a player from St Etienne on a five-year contract, Wesley Fofana, for a deal that will rise up to 30 million quid and it shows you the buying power that, that Rodgers has down at Leicester. You know, he signed Castagne, didn't he? That a player that he wanted for Celtic. He signed him for over 20 million pounds down at Leicester. It gives them the buying power just by crossing that border and moving into the English game that... Um, He's never going to have at Celtic under the current circumstances, uh, normally, uh, ordinarily, never mind now. Um, so he left and he, he went for the riches and he's doing well at Leicester. But um, other than the needle that would be associated with such a fixture, do you fancy Celtic's chances against Leicester? There's another wee question for you, William. I'd be interested to hear that uh, answer as well. Gary doing some decent hitters out of Europe last night. Um, so were Ferenc Varos the mugs? We thought they were. Gary, it's a good point. I don't think they were the mugs uh, that a lot of people thought they were. Yeah, it was disappointing to go out, but when you see them progressing into the uh, group stages, it'll be interesting to see how they do in the groups as well. Uh, and then, you know, like this season, we were looking at Copenhagen coming up against Man U. And you think to yourself, you know, the fixture that uh, overlapped and came into this season was uh, carried over. 
you were thinking to yourself, actually, it, it would have been a bit of a pain uh, to have more fixtures, but you've got the glamour and the glitz of that fixture against Man United this season as well. Barca boy, if we get less Leicester, um, he's very lucky there'll be no fans. Uh, what kind of response would they've got? That's a big question, you know. Um, born into the club, we heard all the chat, didn't we, when Brendan came in? And that uh, flipped, it really did flip uh, on one decision. Uh, we've heard various um, information um, coming out of, you know, Celtic. Dermot Desmond famously gave an interview recently where he spoke about the approach from uh, China, uh, the mega riches that Brendan Rodgers was offered to leave Celtic. He had lined up Dembele to go with him. So, you know, uh, mercenary is uh, a word used quite a bit in modern football. And yes, it's great to go to a club like Leicester where you can buy Wesley Fofana for 30 million quid and uh, Timothy Castagne for 21 million, I think it was, 50 million pound, one full swoop um, in transfer fees, plus more, I would guess, before the transfer window closes. Um, but there's also that mercenary element of just going where the money is for yourself on a personal level. And I think when Dermot Desmond kind of confirmed everything we already knew in relation to the, the Chinese offer, it was all about the money. It was all about the money. And I think that's why it's great when a player like Shane Duffy comes into Celtic, isn't it? And he's not just giving his lip service. Um, you know, and how many of us thought Brennan Rogers was giving his lip service when he first came in? But hey... We'll have a look at that if and when we draw him. Is he lucky that the Celtic fans won't be there? Who knows? Who knows? A lot of people have mellowed, um, whereas a lot of other Celtic fans, quite rightly, um, are still angry at the way Rodgers did it. It's the way he did it, isn't it? It's not the decision, but it's the way he did it as we were going for a historical treble treble. And uh, Van, you're commenting uh, via YouTube. So please remember to get subscribed on there as well. We're heading towards 3,000. Doesn't sound like a lot of subscribers, but we are fairly new to YouTube. We did, um, a Celtic State of Mind did post a few videos early doors. We've done inf interviews with uh, Willie Mealy, Professor Willie Mealy, of course, uh, Kevin McKenna, uh, the Bratback Boys, Spend Like Bratback, um, and a few others. And we're putting a, um, a few videos together, but now we're broadcasting every day and the YouTube figures are growing steadily. So please get us followed and subscribe. And Van, we take Leicester to put Rodgers in his place, Feyenoord because I like them and work in Rotterdam and Dundalk because we should have no worries against them. Well, of course, the um, Feyenoord connection is that... Uh, you know, it's been 50 years since they won the European Cup against Celtic in 1970. Uh, they are celebrating and have been celebrating their equivalent to the 50th anniversary of Lisbon this season. And uh, talking in YouTube videos, we did uh, speak to one of their fans, one of their super fans, who came over and um, spent some time with quite a lot of Celtic fans because she was assisting with a book uh, for Feyenoord's 50th anniversary and she did she did her homework, didn't she? She came over and um, she spoke to myself for the podcast, she spoke to Pat Woods and a few of the other Celtic guys and Evan Williams who played in the game did a few interviews so um, she was very welcome. So get that one uh, watched as well. Um, Ellen Mannins uh, as her name and she was, uh, she was great when she came over and we're still in touch so... Yeah, Feyenoord would be an interesting one. Uh, we Henrik Larsson connection there as well, amongst other players who have played for both clubs. Who else have played for Feyenoord and Celtic? Uh, Bobby Petter and Reggie Blinker. Did Reggie Blinker play for them both? I think he did. Um, so let's have a look at some of the newer, um, the newer Celtic are in Group H. I'm being informed by Raymond Haddon. Group H. Uh, Celtic have been drawn in the Group H. That's... That's the first development of today. And um, I'm looking at my update up here and it certainly doesn't seem to be as live as I wanted it to be. So keep us updated and I'll, I'll be looking for another one um, on my phone as we speak as well. So uh, we need to, to try and get um, an update as soon as possible. Uh, William Kennedy of Celtic can't lose against Pep's Man City team. For me, there is no fear about Leicester. Pablo, mi amigo. Um, yeah. Why not? I mean, anything can happen. I do believe, though, 
that the the famous European nights at Celtic Park um, are you know a massive part of that. I'm not just saying this because we're all Celtic fans here, but a um, massive part of that is us, isn't it? And you just do not have that. Um, you don't have the, the the same atmosphere and the same um, kind of you know fear in the opposition if the fans aren't there. So that that for me is is the biggie. Uh, so let's work through some more of your some more of your questions because I'm being informed that the BBC website is quite a good one to keep an eye on it. I'm on the UEFA website at the moment, so we'll, we'll definitely get um, the one way or another by hook or by crook. We will certainly get that draw uh, for all the Celtic fans out there. So, um, John, John Newlands, you're commenting on Facebook. Welcome to the show, John. Want the easiest group possible? Well, there's no fans. Save Leicester for another day. Why not? Um, it would be massive, wouldn't it? At what stage can we even face... The other Scottish team that are in the in the draw, can we draw them in the in the group stages? Can you imagine that? I'd much rather that when the fans are back, to be fair. Uh, Michael Quinn. Hi, Paul. After watching Leicester last week, I hope we avoid them until later in the competition when hopefully the fans are back in. That's exactly what I'm thinking. You know, the fans at Celtic Park are a massive part uh, of why players and teams don't fancy it. Um, and, you know... It's all about progressing. We want to see Celtic progressing as far as possible. And for me, when you're looking at the, the group stages, we'll probably get one of the, what you would maybe describe as one of the big guns in there. Uh, I know we're in pot one, but you'll probably get one of the big guns in there. But let's try and avoid uh, a group of death, shall we? Because, I mean, we really want to, to get through. And it's it's great for me as well with regards to the financial element of it. You've seen instantly how that affects Celtic, you know, because you've got Neil Lennon coming away. Um, you've got him coming away straight after the the victory last night and talking about Odson Edward, uh, the fact that he is very confident that um, he will still be at Celtic after Monday night. Now, a wee point on Monday as well is that um, a Celtic state of mind um, will be going live on a number of occasions during the day. We'll probably do three broadcasts all about the transfer window and we will be here for the last couple of hours as well between 10 and 12. I've not broke the news to my missus yet, but um, yes, I will be here up until midnight before uh, heading home, uh, knowing how Celtic squad will be shaping up before uh, the end of the year as well. So here we go. We're looking through the BBC. Uh, Group G is Braga and Leicester. Uh, Group E is PSV Eindhoven, P-A-O-K. Group D, Benfica Standard Liège. Group C, Bayer Leverkusen, Slavia Prague. Group B, Arsenal and Rapid Vienna. Hiss and Boo, if you wish. Group A, Roma and Young Boys. And Group L, let's have a wee look. KAA Ghent are in Group L. Group K, CSKA Moscow. Uh, Tottenham are in Group J. Villarreal are in Group I. Celtic are in Group H. Braga are in Group G, remember them. Napoli, Group F. So we'll continue to get you uh, an update on that because obviously uh, with every single draw we know some teams who will be avoiding as well. So uh, Villarreal and Carabag are being drawn into Group I, Group H, Celtic are drawn in there with Sparta Sparta Prague. So that's the first team that we're aware of, um, Celtic and Sparta Prague. What's your thoughts on that? Um, Prague, I remember going there myself. It was the coldest place ever um, to the point where, you know, spent most of the time in the actual hotel. But Sparta Prague and Celtic. Prague was that kind of place for a while where everybody was going for their stag dues, wasn't it? Um, don't know if it's still in vogue in that respect, but uh, the updates are coming in, which is great, and you're getting them almost live on a Celtic state of mind. Um, James McEvitt, great to see Rovers against Milan. Shame that their fans couldn't be there. Yeah, absolutely. And they did design a fantastic program didn't they? it it could almost work as a as a as a flyer or a poster in itself um it was fantastic uh, group j or j tottenham and ludogorets if, if that's how you pronounce it um and we're getting it coming in group l ghent and red star belgrade this is coming in live red star belgrade when 
you think of that, you think of the centenary match, don't you? And some of the fantastic players that they produced back then. Um, Dragan Stojkovic, you know, people go on about iconic players and cult players and Stojkovic is certainly one of them, wasn't he? He was absolutely phenomenal. Um, now, Nick John, the thing that's unforgivable for me is that he, I'll break away for a moment, Group A, Roma, Young Boys and Cluj. So we won't be playing Cluj again. But Nick John saying that the unforgivable thing for him is that he kept quoting the late, great Tommy Burns, even in some of his last interviews at Celtic. That's just wrong. He's not worthy of that, man. Um, it's all about, you know, playing the heartstrings, playing on the heartstrings of, of the Celtic support, you know. So I agree with that to a degree because, you know, I have spoken or... Um, a Celtic State of Mind, rather, have spoken to Jenna Burns. So have a wee look at um, the Jenna Burns podcast um, as well, because it's in the archive. You'll find that um, on all podcast players, but also you can search for it on our YouTube channel and you'll get the Jenna Burns interview where, obviously, um, I would need to double check because I certainly did speak to Jenna in relation to the relationship, in inverted commas, between Brendan Rodgers and Tommy Burns. Um, and whether or not it was as close as Brendan made out. And again, if it wasn't, then he shouldn't be quoting him uh, just to play in the heartstrings of Celtic fans because Tommy is dearly loved by one and all, isn't he? Um, Chris Sutherland, love your show, keep up the good word work. I get, I'm get, i getting loads of, by the way, I love getting messages like that. Um, obviously, it strokes the ego and all this kind of stuff automatically and I'm not going to get big-headed about it, but I really do appreciate it. I've got to take the negatives on board as well, of course. Uh, but I really appreciate when people take the time to, to make points like that. Now, in Group B, Arsenal and Rapid Vienna um, also have mould. Um, you know, when I think of mould, I just think of Chris Commons, don't I? So they're going to be faced with Rapid Vienna and Arsenal as well. That's Group B just coming in. And um, yeah, I do. I love to hear the feedback coming in for a Celtic state of mind. Uh, but rest assured, I love doing it. If you love listening to it, I love doing it. Uh, Braga, Leicester and AEK Athens um, are in Group G. Now remember, Braga and Athens, we've got a bit of previous with them um, in Europe. Not so much Leicester, we've never met them in European competition because they don't, until recently, play in Europe. Um, that's a fairly recent thing, isn't it? So... Um, Thankfully, we won't be uh, married up with Leicester. I say thankfully, there's plenty of people who said they wanted Brendan Rodgers' team to come along. Benfica and Standard Liège are being joined by Glasgow Rangers in Group D. So, there you go. Uh, we certainly will not be facing um, the other team in Glasgow. One of the other teams in Glasgow in the Europa League stages. And... Um, Ah, we'll keep them until the fans can come back eh, if they get through so here we go, let's have a wee look at some more of the the comments coming in, Sean Ross get cover for left back, cover get all the players on the same level yeah, we will kick up gears unless they're not good draw, better names out there yeah, you know, I still think that um, Celtic have to click into top gear, I really do think that um, I'm hoping that with our progress in Europe that uh, we will bring in what we need. Everybody seems to know what we need as well. Um, and, and what we need is, we need a left back, don't we, to, to cover uh, Greg Taylor, Celtic, AC Milan, Sparta Prague. Someone is uh, tongue-in-cheek saying that uh, Ayer can play 45 minutes each way. Thanks for that. Uh, that was uh, that was quick. Thank you very much. You actually told me that before. It uh, came onto the website that I'm referring to. But Group H at the moment is Celtic, Sparta, Prague and AC Milan. That's looking like a glamorous group. Um, I would say that uh, without a doubt. And you never know if AC Milan don't want to buy Ayer before then. They may well want to uh, come back with a, an improved bid after that. Uh, Villarreal, Quarabag and Maccabi Tel Aviv are in Group I. So very, very interesting Sparta, Prague and AC Milan. What's your thoughts on that? Um, yes, someone is coming in to say AGSC technology videos. Cracking group featuring Celtic um, or for Celtic. Quite glamorous. It certainly is. It certainly is. Uh, there's some clubs that uh, we seem to come up against fairly regularly, as regularly as you could expect in Europe. Uh, so we've had some great encounters with AC Milan, haven't we, over the years? 
uh, and in recent times. Some near misses against them as well. The last 16, they put us out 1-0. Um, if I remember rightly, it was Kaka that scored the winning goal for AC Milan. Won nothing over two games. Absolutely, um, you know, it was so tight. It was so, so tight in the last 16. Uh, we also beat them. Yeah, we beat them when Scott McDonald and uh, Steph McManus, I think, scored as well. So, yeah, it was. It's one of these teams that um, they've given us a few good games and hopefully we'll have another one. So let's have a look and uh, see. And he would be cup tied if he moved. Yeah, he certainly would, John MCA. But um, I don't think, especially after last night, I don't think we're going to be selling any of our top players now. What do I mean by top players? Eduard. Uh, we're not going to sell Eduard now. We don't have to, which is fantastic news from Neil Lennon. And um, when the time comes, uh, obviously, and it will come, then you're selling your player for their true value. And at this moment in time, under the, the global circumstances, that wouldn't have been the case, I don't think, with Eduard. Um, so here's one coming in from Scott Callaghan. Or Callan and sorry Scott. Bring back Zlatan to Paradise. Duffy will have him in his pocket. I thought you meant bring him back, as in sign him. I always thought that he would have been a fantastic player for Celtic. I mean, that sounds obvious, but I just like his attitude. Uh, Group J, Tottenham, uh, Ludogorets, Ludogorets and LASK. So that's looking like a group that Tottenham um, are going to scoosh at the moment. But again, I'm maybe being disrespectful uh, because... Um, obviously there are no easy games in Europe as Celtic have found out to their cost this season um, so whilst we're waiting on other other teams to get pulled out the hat what were your thoughts on last night's game um, obviously we covered it live we didn't do the watch along because you know I think people uh, were too engrossed in the Celtic TV commentary to listen to us um, uh, yeah and um, Barkas and goals Barkas and goals. Uh, he's grown into that position. He's been absolutely um, brilliant, actually, since he came in. I'm not quite sure what the or the the, uh, the kind of speculation around his performances uh, was all about. In fact, I'm I'm pretty sure what it was about. We're just trying to unsettle the boy. Um, I think he's come in. He's done fantastically well. Celtic um, Group E, rather PSV Eindhoven, P A O K and Granada um, as well. Um, and I'm being told from Stephen Coulthard that uh, the final club to come out the pot is Lille. So there we go. Um, tough group, absolutely. It really is a tough group. Uh, is it beyond Celtic's capabilities? I don't think. Um, that's a there's a point right there. Um, John MCA or McKay. That's a Champions League level groups. I've been thinking that actually. Uh, I've been thinking that now for quite a few years that you're looking at Champions League groups, you're looking at Europa League groups and some of the Europa League groups, you know, it's difficult to differentiate. You can differentiate when you look at the balance sheet, of course. And uh, Barca boy, the comments are coming in really quickly there, so I'll come back to the one I just went on to there. Barca boy, that's a a good group, tough but doable. Do you think it's doable? I certainly think it is because I don't think Celtic yet... Um, are in top gear. I think we're still going to bring in maybe two, one or two players um, before the transfer window closes shot on Monday night. And um, there are other players that are coming into their own. You look at Ryan Christie's performance last night. Comes in for a bit of stick. Even last night at half time, he was coming in for a bit of stick. Uh, but we were listing some of the stuff he was doing um, and just in the second half, Ryan Christie. Uh, and he was really involved in just about all of the, the creative play in the second half. Uh, so you look at 63 minutes, uh, Christy with a long range effort, 67 minutes, um, a corner uh, which came to El Hamid, an excellent effort from El Hamid, just wide on the volley. Um, 70 minutes in, Christy has a shot and Eddie scores with a rebound. And then uh, later on, you've got 78 minutes, Christy corner uh, to Duffy, which he missed. So Christy was involved really, and uh, earlier on, uh, I a chance that he created for Ayer and it was actually a bad miss by Ayer so just about everything creative uh, came through Christie he's, he's kind of hitting top form isn't he so there's players Frimpong recently you know last few games hitting top form there are other players who will come into the side El Yunusi not so, so much last night but um, he seems to have come on to the game Ayeti will come back uh, to full fitness and partner I would guess Eduard and when you start firing on all cylinders that's when you see 
you know, Celtic going into these group games maybe with a wee bit more confidence. Um, the question's coming in, is it better? Is it a better group than last year? What do you think? That's coming in from Jinky Newton. Um, is it a better group than last year? These Europa League groups, I mean, they're so difficult, aren't they? And uh, someone just commented that it looks almost like a Champions League group. Um, and IH Decorating is calling it uh, the group of death. We've seen a few of them. We've seen a few of them in the past as well. Gary Doonan, no real advantage having the pot one. So you work up your coefficient and you get into that pot one and then you're still drawing teams like AC Milan. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, Joe Porter reckons that Milan are probably the favourites from the group. Uh, the other sides are decent as well. Um, and AGSC technology videos, this glamour group might help motivate our squad and maybe entice a few more players. Good point. Yeah, we know it's not the Champions League, but the fixtures um, are box office. They're box office fixtures. So you've maybe got uh, a few players in your sights. Uh, obviously, the the recent ones that we've been talking about is Ryan Sessignon, uh, uh, Mattia the Skilio from Juve was today's name. Uh, Celtic have made an approach for both players. That is the level. And I think if we go further back to some of the early Celtic State of Mind uh, bulletins that we did this season, we were talking about the transfer window. And some fans totally disagreed with us, but we were talking about how good it was. And I asked the question, is it the best transfer window? Um, now, what I mean by that is the transfer windows obviously came into play, I think, 2002. Not the, the best transfer season, the transfer window uh, process. And I think in many, many ways it is one of the finest because every player we're signing is a first team player. We're not signing any projects in this window, are we? Every single player, albeit Turnbull hasn't forced his way into the... to, to, have a, to be a first pick um, yet. They're all first team players. There's no one that we're expecting to kind of disappear for six or 12 months as a development um, or get uh, loaned out as development. So, you know, the players that we're now looking at, you know, a right back from UV, um, a left wing back or left winger from Spurs, you know, that level, that calibre of player is, you know, it's exciting for Celtic fans, isn't it? We've also already brought in players such as um, El Yunusi from the English Premier League. Um, Albiana Yeti from the English Premier League Shane Duffy from the English Premier League so we are, we're buying players who for me are a better calibre than many of the, the recent transfer windows and when you look at the targets of two players where it's been confirmed that Celtic have made approaches they are of the same ilk. It looks as though we're looking to use the, the loan market, something that Colin Watt on a Celtic State of Minds mentioned a few times but when you're bringing in that type of quality, then it's worth using the loan market, isn't it? Sessignon, you're never going to have a loan to buy because we would never be able to to spend that kind of money, even just on a transfer fee for a player like Sessignon. But to bring in that type of quality and you're going into um, you know Europe, will that make any difference to Di Schilio, um, but who doesn't seem convinced at the moment that uh, he wants to come and play his football in Scotland? Why would it not? You know, why would it not? So, very, very good point and well made as well. Scott Callanan, right, someone double check that. Where's Timo Weir playing? Where's Timothy Weir? Where is he now? Um, are we going to be seeing a familiar face in the, the group stages? Um, so, yeah, we're getting a lot of good, we're getting a lot of good feedback from the Celtic supporters. I think it's... Um, you know, it's a grind to get through those qualifiers, isn't it? It really is a, a grind. And um, we've dropped into the, the Champions League, from the Champions League into the Europa League qualifiers. You know, last season we've done the same this season. And, um, you know, you get the disappointment, you've got to pick yourself back up and then you start looking forward to the groups. Uh, we're there, we're in the groups. We've got a very kind of glamorous three games uh, at home and three away ties to look forward to. Will football fans be able to be at any of these games? And if not, how are we going to actually sell the package as we normally sell it, you know, in, in, in uh, the, the last part of the year it's released? So that'll be an interesting development as well from the club, who thankfully gave us the game last night, and it was great that they did that as well. Joe Porter, uh, maybe the Italian lad will want to come now. You never know, because what you do get 
is you do get um, the glamour of uh, the European competition and that's a selling point for Celtic when they're trying to bring in players from the likes of Juventus or from Tottenham Hotspur. Um, so yeah, absolutely, to be honest with you, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that because I think it's a group we can get out of. It's a group we can um, qualify from. Um, so... Aye, it's decorating. Remember, we had Lazio and Ren last year who outperformed AC and Lille in their respective leagues. And Prague will be the same level as Cluj. Hard, but not impossible. I totally agree with that. Um, I think that Celtic uh, are in a group that we can get out of. Um, and I'm glad, obviously, I'm delighted because I would, you know, the disappointment after the Ferenc Faros game. Uh, was palpable amongst the Celtic support and of course it is we are ambitious as a fan base we're hopefully ambitious as a club uh, to be playing at that level but look at the players we've brought in look at the five players we've brought in Um, and the two that we've spoken about there's no guarantee they're going to come in obviously but that shows you the level and the calibre of player that we're trying to bring into the club Um, so I'm delighted at the moment and I hope everybody else out there is happy. It's been a fantastic 45 minute bulletin. I've been flying solo um, and I'm getting told the audio's fine. So Red Scotland, I think maybe it's at your end, pal, but um, have a wee look at that because all the mics and everything are set up here and uh, it's working just fine at the moment. So yeah, we will be back. We'll be back for the St. Johnston game early kickoff. What's your thoughts on that? How will we line up? You know, this is a big thing as well. Um, We've got a few injuries. Um, What I'm going to do to top off today's bulletin, uh, it's been a positive bulletin, hasn't it? Um, We're going to be looking at last night's game, go through the team, see how we performed, and then maybe give you my predicted 11 uh, for Sunday's game as well. We will be live with um, an all-star panel of Axon Pundits uh, on Sunday as well. We, We go live half an hour before the game, if Kevin can get in nice and early, um, we'll we'll do a, a bulletin prior to that just to catch up on any developments transfer-wise tonight and Saturday. Uh, but we'll go half an hour before the game, we'll go at half-time and we'll run for half an hour after the game as well. And we want you all to get involved. And uh, you might notice that I fly solo on a Friday at the moment. I am looking for somebody to join me on that side of the screen. That side of the screen. Um, on a Friday, are you a pundit? Uh, do you want to even get a wee bit of experience in live broadcasting? We record podcasts in the studio. Um, we publish books. Uh, we record promo videos. We record pre-recorded videos. And you can get involved in all that if you want to come and join the team um, at a state of mind. So bring your skills to, to us. We'll give you a platform to develop. And um, it's great fun. It's absolutely brilliant and uh, obviously a Celtic State of Mind is our um, big show, that's a pivotal show but we are expanding into other areas as well. Tonight, Nick Mercer of the band Sergeant, remember them? He joins us on the couch for the Salt and Sauce show to talk about his musical career and he plays us an acoustic song, a brand new song. Um, so that will be tonight at six o'clock. I've watched it, it's looking great. Um, but if you want to get involved, give me a shout, and obviously we will listen to anybody, and um, it would be great to get you involved in a Celtic state of mind, on a Friday particularly. Uh, so Sarajevo, I was talking about Barkas. What I like about Barkas, I like that he's got a bit of wideness about him, he's a bit wide isn't he and uh, he was doing a lot of the things that uh, we've seen in European football over the years Um, the crafty side of football that sometimes you need to do to get yourself over the line and I like that I can see him winding up the opposition but I can also see Celtic fans taking him to our heart uh, very much like Arthur Boric I'm talking about the character rather than the, the performer now, before the game, I gave the defence a kiss of death because we were talking about Beaton starting the game and uh, Stephen Mullen was um, all for Julien coming straight in with the point that um, if Julien is fit enough for the bench, he should be able to play. And my point was, yeah, I agreed with, with that sentiment because we could end up getting an injury in the first five minutes. Lo and behold, Beaton, who has been performing so, so well, gets injured. Uh, it's a bad one, apparently. So he is joining James A. Forrest and Johnston, Mikey Johnson, uh, on the treatment table at the moment. Duffy, I mentioned before that Duffy's game against Hibs 
was probably his poorest in a Celtic jersey. I, I'm not saying he was poor. It was probably his poorest in a Celtic jersey. Um, he was back to his dominant best last night. He organises that defence. You can see that he's a big influence on Chris Iyer. You can see that. Um, obviously, not having the fans in the stadium allows us to hear a lot of the shouts and you can tell that he really is an orchestrator at the back. He's almost like the defensive captain. Ayer solid last night, should have scored we've seen that so many times when the ball falls to him, even in the air uh, in that opposition box you know, he's not quite sure what to do with it and um, again, that came from Christie Frimpong, it was a threat throughout the game um, he may not have had the impact that he'd had in previous games, but um, he really was the out ball for us Ryan Christie, best player on the park absolutely brilliant, he was involved in all the creative moves that Celtic created and um, he's a player we need to keep a hold of. Scott Brown, I think Scott Brown uh, did his job well. Um, we're not expecting Bruni to be playing uh, box to box as he maybe did uh, in his younger days, but you know he done his, he's done his role well. He's come through a number of games without the booking that we were worried about, and hopefully that continues against St. Johnson on Sunday. McGregor, Alan Stubb said last week that he consistently gets an 8 or a 9 every game and I agree with that um, sometimes we take him for granted don't we but McGregor is absolutely pivotal to our success Taylor how did Taylor play last night I thought he played really well um, I still think that he doesn't always like to play the first time ball in maybe that's something that he's working on but he I thought had a fine fine game uh, last night Eduard scored the all important goal I think it was a frustrating game for what was a lone striker really I know that El Yunusi played off him but uh, Eduard was coming deep he was working hard uh, off the ball to try and get involved and when he went off the pitch he looked as though he was knackered and I actually think that he's going to be rested on Sunday um, and then of course El Yunusi partnered him a wee bit quieter than normal but he was involved in the goal he shows in the last few games I think he's shown that he's more effective going through the centre what of the substitutes I thought El Hamid came on and did what El Hamid does um, you know, he is a very reliable player who maybe won't always be a first pick, but you can bring him in at, on the right, you can bring him in in centre half, and he does a very effective job for us. And Cham might have been disappointed that he didn't start, but it was the right choice when you look at the performance of Ryan Christie. And Cham, is he the player that Celtic might let go during this transfer window? He is the most dispensable. I don't want to see him go, but he is the most dispensable. Um, Klamala, come on. Done really well, worked hard, uh, became a bit of a nuisance. But I must say, I was very interested to see that Griffiths was on the bench, um, as well as Julien, Turnbull and Bain, who were all on new subs last night. What changes did we make uh, for St Johnston? I think what we'll see is we will see a return to Julien coming in for the injured uh, Beaton. I think that Edward will be rested and Clamalla will start um with a view of maybe trying to get some minutes in the legs of Lee Griffiths. Griffiths. And I think that after his exertions last night, that uh, Griffiths will be rested and Turnbull will make his first start in a Celtic jersey. So I'm looking forward to that. If I have to give you my prediction on Sunday, I think Celtic will win 4-0. Um, and I expect that... Um, Clamalla will get on the, the score sheet at some stage as well. Let me know your thoughts. We will be back with you on Sunday. We'll put a podcast out uh, tomorrow as well because we did interview Victoria McNulty. We never got around to putting the podcast out, so that'll come out tomorrow. If anything groundbreaking happens, then you might just see me tomorrow as well. But um, please join us again half an hour before kickoff on Sunday. And thank you, each and every one of you, for getting involved uh, with a Celtic state of mind. Thank you.